Got him. Ha 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 ha. Here we go. Heck yeah, on the Ned Rig. How's it going, folks? And welcome back to TRF. I'm so glad you all decided to join us today. Today, we're going to be talking about the Ned Rig, one of my favorite, if not my favorite, soft plastics in the finesse category for uh, some big bass. We are in upstate New York today, hoping to catch some giants for you guys, and of course, teach you guys how to become better bass anglers. Ah, yes, let's go. Big old fish. And just like that, as always, let's talk about it. Well, how's it going everybody? My name is Tyler Anderson and welcome back to this channel called Tyler's Real Fishing. I make it my goal on this channel to help you guys become better bass anglers with every single video you watch. And I've had this topic recommended to me for a long time and I kind of wanted to wait until I got into an area where I could catch some big fish to show you the potential it has. And that bait is called the Ned Rig. Now I think the Ned Rig popped up about four or five years ago. I could be wrong. There's probably people that were using a Ned style bait a long, long time ago. But at least in the mainstream bass market, the Ned Rig came about a few years ago. And in my experience, it represents, as I talked about uh, in a video a few videos ago, my top three smallmouth soft plastics, it represents perfectly a crawfish or a goby, any sort of little green pumpkin sort of thing that is completely defenseless, especially a defenseless crawdad that's lost both of his claws. So now he's just kind of sitting here like this, you know, swimming through the water, hoping not to get eaten. And so it's really a simple, simple lure. You know, when it comes to finesse fishing, you want to throw things that are smaller because of course those fish are not gonna be eating your chatterbaits, your frogs, your, your big worms, your sinkos. Oftentimes they're gonna be a little bit more pressured, maybe a cold front came through and you're gonna to have to catch fish in a different way. Now I've made finesse videos in the past, but this one I wanna specifically talk about the Ned Rig. Now what makes the Ned Rig so special is that it is a tiny presentation that, uh, that is applicable in so many different areas. So the Ned Rig works uh, really, really good around rocks, around grass, around you know docks. You can you can throw it up you know, next to dock posts, uh, and you can even vertically jig it as well by putting a minnow style lure on it. Here's the Outcast Tackle Perfect Ned Head, and uh, it's just an incredible you know jig head. So I'm going to show you how a Ned Rig works. It is really, really, really simple. Like it's, I feel like a lot of people overcomplicate it. This here is a Strike King Rage uh, Ned Worm. All I do is I find where the tail is poking out. I line up, just like I showed y'all within how the, how the video on how to rig all the soft plastics, line it up to exactly where it pokes out. I'm gonna poke it all the way through, nice and straight, poke it on out. Add a dab of super glue if you want, but I'm not going to today. And then, actually, you know what folks, that was a little bit too, uh, too short. I'm gonna push it a little bit farther this time. And then you feed it right on through, straight as a whistle, and that right there is the perfect Ned Rig little setup. Now I throw the Ned Rig on a little bit stiffer of a spinning rod, uh, not a bait caster of course, unless you're throwing like a big heavy Ned Rig, but most of the time a Ned Rig is a smaller size lure. Um, throw it on a spinning rod and a little bit stiffer of one than I throw on a bait, on, on, a, uh, on a drop shot. So right now I have the loose custom speed stick spinning rod, the tube special it is a 7.2 medium. I, I either throw a seven foot medium or a seven two medium, whichever one I got laying around the deck. I've got the Team Loose Custom Pro on here, the speed spool with 20 pound Seaguar Smackdown braid, eight pound to 12 pound Seaguar Tatsu leader connected with the double uni knot. Now I, I'm trying to learn the FG. Uh, it's a work in progress like it is for most of y'all. I, I really haven't learned it yet, but I'll get to it at some point. Now, when it comes to where where to throw the Ned Rig, you know, like I think this video is gonna be titled something like, you know, Ned Rig tips you're missing or whatever. Uh, I think a lot of people focus on this thing way, way too shallow. I think the Ned Rig is uh, a very, very powerful bait to catch big fish, but my number one tip is to throw it deeper than you think you have to. Now, in today's video, it's gonna be mostly bed fishing catches because the smallmouth here in New York are incredibly uh, aggressive right now, they're on beds, and so you can either catch them on one of two things, the drop shot or the Ned Rig, and I'll have the drop shot video coming out very soon. But like I said, my biggest tip when it comes to the Ned Rig is throw it deeper than most people do. I think most people throw this thing in I don't know, three to five to eight foot of water. If you can get your Ned Rig, especially with a heavier head uh, size, head weight, get it out deeper on a rock pile in 20, 25 feet. Oftentimes those big bass that are sitting down there in the depths that don't want to eat something huge like a football jig, a Carolina rig, a Ned Rig can just flat out get the job done. And so, like I said, it's a super simple bait. You cast it out there, you let it sink to the bottom, and you do tiny 
little hops with it, just like you do a, you know, a, sh a drop shot, except every little hop is actually moving the bait, not shaking it in place. You know, shaky head, oftentimes, you'll throw it on a little bit lighter of a rod so you can shake the tip and kind of make the worm wobble. With the Ned Rig, almost all the time, I'm literally going to be hopping the thing just like a crawfish or some kind of wounded little goby or, or uh, some other kind of prey down there uh, in a prime position for that bass to eat. So let's hop on the front deck real quick and we'll show y'all how to do it. So we're a bit shallow right now, not really gonna have a whole lot of opportunity to throw it, but I'll cast it out there. That was a cool cast, I kinda like that. That was a backhand. And of course, let it sink to the bottom, reel in your slack, and just kinda give it some hops, just like this. Hop, 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 hop. Occasionally you're gonna have to do maybe some more of like kinda drag hops, especially if you're throwing a longer Ned Rig type worm, maybe the drag's gonna be better than an up and down hop. But, uh, nope. I had a perch. But it is just a super simple technique to catch you some giant fish. So with that said, I don't really have a whole lot more to say about it. Let's hop on the water and show y'all some awesome fish catches using the Ned Rig. Awesome. You see him? Oh, he ate it. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, you got him. Yes, there you go. <laughs> nice. Colton got himself one on the Ned. Right on him. First flip. Oh, 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 oh. No, he didn't want it. No, he didn't. He got one more tug in him. He didn't want the smoke. Oh gosh, ah, oh. three pounder. Yeah. It's amazing how these are like, ah, oops. Cut how many three pounders? Whatever. Cut quite a lot of three pounders. Thanks for not shaking for me, Chief. You love to see that. Look at that. That's a good looking fish once again out in New York. Caught him on the Ned Rig. All right, let's get a release. Nice, buddy. Nice. We on them, we on them. They bite. It's a tub. I got one. I got a small mouth. Oh my goodness. Is it a big one? Oh, it ain't a bad one. It ain't a bad one, that's for sure. Bring it in here, Mr. Smalley. Oh, my first one of the Minnesota trip by myself. Looks about a three and a half pounder. Could be a little bit smaller, but we'll see. Yes, got him. Good fish. Good fish on the Ned Rig. Beautiful, beautiful smallmouth. I will take him every single day of the week. That'll go almost three pounds. Just a classic Lake Mille Lac smallmouth. Awesome. Oh, it gets me excited. Oh boy. We got one. We got one, boys and girls. How big are we talking? It seems to be fighting a little bit harder. Bigger head shakes. So let's see. It almost feels like a walleye. I don't think it's a bass. Oh no, it's a bass, it's a bass. Oh baby, okay. I like this lake a lot. <laughs> oh, he got the Ned Rig down his throat. Oh man, oh, sorry bud. Spit it out for me there. Good job, good job, ouch, ouch. Heck yeah, probably pushing four pounds. We'll, we'll weigh it out in the connect scale. 
Oh, okay, yeah, I was right. Three, three point eight eight. I'll take three point eight eight pounders literally all day. Love this fish. So so beautiful. Gosh, they're strong and big. Whew. We're gonna let you go, Mr. Mr. Big Smalley. Mrs. Probably. Probably Mrs. Big Smalley. Adios. Yeah. Oh, I got one. <laughs> oh, I hope he didn't swallow it. He's been sitting there for a while. He ate it on the fall, I think. All right, come on, bud. What you doing? What you doing? Yeah, he's not big. Maybe three pounds. I'm gonna put the poles down a little bit. Boom. Let those drift paddles do their work. Bring it in, bud. Bring it in, little smallie. Little small jaw on the Ned rig. Yeah, that's a chunk. Solid two and a half pounder. Ow. Beautiful though. On the Ned rig, ate it down the mouth. And basically, if you guys have seen my crawfish videos, the underwater craw videos, you know why a Ned rig works so well because it looks like a little body of a crawfish with no claws. So these smallies are like, oh, this guy has no defense mechanism. All right. See ya, amigo. Oh, there's one. <laughs> Got him. Oh, this is a big one. I'm pretty sure this is a big one. Come on, where are you going, big boy? Uh, he's not fighting that hard, but he's not coming up. Oh, walleye. <laughs> Classic. Classic walleye eating the Ned rig, you know? Got the walleye down the gullet. We got one here. We got one, JP. That's a small mouth. It is a small mouth, that's for sure. We'll give him a little bit more drag to play around with. Four pounder though. Beautiful. This lake is magnificent. Double up. Heck yeah. Dude, when you get them, you get them good. I've lost a couple on it, but not too many. Yeah. I mean, it's so small. It, it fits their mouth pretty well. The thing, the only time that I lose them is when like I lose them in the first few instances, of, like if your first like hard run they make. Yeah. <laughs> Rip. Oh yep. I think it's big, JP. Cut all the bass, and now we're back to the walleye. Oh, oh, you got a rock bass. Look at this, multi-species. We're some, we're some real fishermen here. He's not five, but he's still a nice one. You got that scale? Uh-huh. 430, 441. 441. That's close to my PB. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, that's definitely a good one to end on. Yeah, if you're curious, like, man, should I make a trip to Mille Lacs? The answer is yes. When you do, you should call me. <laughs> yeah, when you do, call JP. That's incredible. Good gosh. Post spawn. That one might be pre spawn, but it's probably post spawn. Uh, it's a nice one. It's not huge, though. I think it's fat. Yes. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Big one. Some baggins, man. Straight. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> this is just too much fun. This really is. Facebook or Instagram. Uh huh. Oh, oh dude, sweet. mine is gone. Not really gone, but metaphorically.